Mike Biker Canada here. Thought this would be the perfect way to intro my video. I'm all set up at this trailhead about four hours from my house before starting a five day bikepacking trip. For my itinerary to work, I need to hit the trail first thing in the morning, closest hotel is about an hour away. I think the cost of that is almost as much as I spent making this entire bed in a car setup. Let me give you a tour. Here we are sitting in the back seat with tons of leg room. I could stretch out if I wanted, right behind the privacy curtain. I've got all the windows blacked out with Reflectix. Right next to me is the bed. I'm six foot tall and I can stretch out here. My feet go into the trunk. Show you in this video how to build the wooden platform. On top of that is my air mattress sleeping pad. I've got the air mattress covered with a sleeping bag liner. And I'll be sleeping in some lightweight clothing using this down quilt if I get cold. Here's a little teaser from the DIY you're about to watch. Some pretty simple framing and plywood structure to create this bed for under $200 Canadian, 150 US. Here's a look at how easy and convenient my bedroom routine is. I can hang out here, watch a movie, chill out. I'm not yet ready for bed. And when bedtime comes along, super convenient. Just a hop. And I'm in bed. Yeah, I'm six foot tall and this is super comfortable. Lots of room. So let me show you how I built this for cheap and easy. First off, Home Depot. Start by grabbing a two by four by eight feet long, a couple of one by three by eight feet long, a sheet of four by eight plywood for the sleeping platform. We're going with 11 millimeter thick. Getting a rough cut done so it fits in the car on the right home. And you're gonna need some wood screws. You'll need some long, three inch for the framing, some short, about an inch and a half to attach the sleeping board. First, remove the bench. Nice and cinch is quite easy. There's two little clips for the seat cushion. To remove the backrest, not hard at all. I've got a couple of 14 millimeter bolts on the front side and back side. These two seatbelt clips, they're being held in by a bolt as well. To remove that, you require a torque socket at least in my case, it was a Torx 50. If you don't have one, you can pick one up for your ratchet at uh, Canadian Tire for about $10. In my case, I don't have to remove the two 14 millimeter bolts at the rear of my backrest. You see here, the mounting plate has a hole in it. I just need to slide the mounting plate forward and lift it off of the bolt. There are a few ways to measure out the dimensions for the plywood platform, because my shape is going to be slightly custom. I happen to have some cardboard lying around. This is what the cardboard template looks like placed over top of the plywood. Time to trace it out. Now time to cut the wood with a jigsaw. Now let's do a test fit and cross our fingers. First time's a charm. Now because of the awkward shape, it'll lower the other half of the seat, slide it over top. We'll be able to raise the seat once it's in place. Looks like first time's a charm. Let's go on in and have a look. All the way to the front looks pretty good next step is to use the 2x4 and build some framing underneath here to prop it up because it's not quite level and to add some more support once my body weight's on it Here you can see why I picked up the one by three pieces of wood. The plywood's only 11 millimeters thick, so I wanted something with more rigidity to run the full length. Sitting right on this lip right here, crossing over the hollow spare tire well, and eventually resting up ahead on the two by four. Let me take you in for a closer look, get a great view of the framing we just built. Here's the one by three support rail sitting on top. They run right to the back of the car. Now let's see if this whole thing is level. And it is level. I'm worried about splinters puncturing my ultralight sleeping pad. It's pretty thin and I see quite a few splinters already on the surface. I'm thinking covering it with a fabric that matches the vehicle interior would give it some softness and also add to the uh, the stealthiness of it. Stop at the fabric line. Hopefully they have something that'll match the vehicle's interior. Perfect match. 
stopping off at Canadian Tire. Grab some spray glue. Spray the glue. Not bad. Spray glue worked pretty good. It's very easy to trim with an X-Acto. Shot of the final product. It's all the privacy shades are in. You can watch a movie, eat, and it's time for bed. Quick and easy. Pretty darn comfortable. Back at Canadian Tire. Gonna grab this curtain rod, make a privacy curtain for the sleeping area. With the curtain rod, I bought at Canadian Tire. I used some pliers and pressed both ends flat, like so. For a curtain, I used an old bed sheet. Nice thing about bed sheets are the material's already folded over and stitched at the head, which allows you to thread the curtain rod through nice and easy. And then when you reattach the other end of the curtain rod, you're left with an expandable curtain. Slides right underneath plastic molding of the center pillar. You take your curtain, you throw it in front of the front seats and you finesse it around so it covers the sides as well I'll show you what that looks like from the outside after mentioning the velcro idea of fastening the curtain to the pillar here decided to go ahead and do it I picked up this velcro at home depot it says it's for fabric it's permanent adhesive but it can withstand laundering so we'll see how that works all right so that worked really well I got one velcro up here one down there I was just going to kind of place it loosely, but the Velcro keeps it nice and snug. This Velcro adheres really well to the fabric. I was worried it would stay connected to the mating surface of the other Velcro and rip off the fabric, but it's on there permanent. And now to make the shades for the sides and rear window, grab a roll of Reflectix, two feet wide by 10 feet long. With a marker, I traced the shape of my window onto the Reflectix. Then I cut it a tiny bit bigger than the window so I can then squish it into place, completely self-supported. Let's go on in, have a look. Looks pretty snug. Let's see what it looks like on the other side. A lot of people go ahead and paint these black. I may do that. I decided to go with this tape instead of spray paint to black out the shades. Apparently it performs better than the spray paint, which tends to crack and fade over time in the sunny windows and with the repeated rolling up for storage. We'll see how this looks. That looks really good. I'm very happy with that. Completely blacked out. Still have the reflective portion on the inside. If I want to switch it over for some sun reflection. Now let's repeat the process for the rear and the other side. Here's a shot of the car, the curtain, and all three window shades in. Here's a view from the inside. And for the warmer season, I could swap out the Reflectix for this bug netting and get a breeze. For a more stealthier look, you have the option of draping the curtains in behind the front seats. Makes for a much less conspicuous sleeping area, all while still using the same attachment points and not while losing a whole lot of cabin space. One last thing I did since I'll be sleeping in the car is I got a little crazy, removed the front seats and gave it a good vacuum shampoo. All right, so that was how I built this bed in the car. I'm just gonna do a bit of reading before I go to sleep but I will make sure to link in the description below all the materials I used for this build. And please leave in the comments any questions you might have. Like and subscribe, hit the notification bell. Lots more videos coming up. Mike Biker Canada.